In New York City, a GOP Senate candidate goes in to vote. They put little check marks in boxes. Then they slip this into a glassine envelope and slip it into a scanner. The worker practically yanked it out of the candidate's hand. Now, remember, this is a candidate. This isn't just a, um, a voter. This is actually a Senate candidate. The campaign worker sticks it into the scanner and pulls it out saying, it's not working. You missed some boxes. You have to check a box for each vote. Just go down this column here and put a check mark for all the Democrats. There were several candidates running as Democrats that were running unopposed. So there was nobody to vote for for the Republicans. This candidate that was voting didn't want to vote for a Democrat, unopposed or not. So she said, no, I don't want to vote for Democrats. He said, you have to. Well, the candidate also happened to be a lawyer, and she refused. She took the ballot, slipped it into the scanner herself, and it went through. But how many people, how many people handed their ballots in? And we're told you have to put a check mark here and vote for these Democrats. How many people were told that and were too intimidated or too ignorant to know otherwise? So they just cast the votes the way a poll worker told them to. That is patently illegal. There was another place. I don't know if it's in my stack here or not. I don't believe it is. But there was a school that was a polling place. And the polling booths were right under a big mural of Obama. Again, campaign literature, campaign propaganda is not allowed in a polling booth. So, okay, up next... Turns out in 2008, now we're going back to Obama's original election, leaked emails from the intelligence group Stratfor, very, very well respected senators and congressmen, people in think tanks like Heritage and Cato, they subscribe to this intelligence briefing. It costs several hundred dollars a year to get their full package, probably more than that. They they revealed that the massive voter fraud was so prevalent, it would change the outcome of the elections. John McCain got word of this, and he refused to do anything about it. He was afraid that with all these black people voting for Obama, pointing out all the voter fraud would cause civil unrest. Now, with the blessing of hindsight, we can see that the fear of mob violence in our country is no longer hypothetical. They call the the call by the new Black Panther Party in Sanford, Florida, to seize or kill a private citizen. These are the same guys, the same organization that stood outside voting booths, intimidating voters. They went down to Sanford, Florida, and threatened to kidnap and kill George Zimmerman. And there was never any charges pressed against them. We have a caller. Caller, are you on the line? Yes. Hey, Tom, here's the deal. I believe that the last election, the re-election of Mr. Obama, the votes were tabulated out of the country. Do you yes. have any information of that? Yes, I do. Is that a the, fact or is that, is that phony? No, it is a fact. It is a fact. Oh. The company that did all the tabulation of the votes was bought by a company in Spain. So all the vote tallies are now wired across the Atlantic to, to a socialist country in a company that we don't have any control, we don't have any regulations over. And then they are 
tabulated, turned around, and piped back in. So the votes are tabulated locally, but the vote totals are done in a socialist country with a company that is controlled by people that are outside of U.S. regulations. And why this was allowed to happen, well, Obama would have been for it um, because it's a socialist country, let's face it. But why the Congress allowed it to happen, why we allowed our voter integrity, if there's any left, to be taken outside the country is a mystery. Now, I raised heck when I saw it. I was one of the first, I think, for about three days that was talking the story. And I thought, because of information I had been fed, that George Soros owned the company. Michelle Malkin picked up on it about a week and a half later, did some of her own research, and she has a much better research staff than I do. Uh, and she disclaimed that. She says that there's no direct connection between George Soros and that company. Now, whether it's shell companies and all that, brother, I don't know. I don't know. But the very fact that our vote process is managed in any way, shape, or form and could be massaged by somebody outside the country is unfathomable. Right. Last question. Is there any hope that we can publicize this besides just word of mouth and, and blogs. I mean, this is information that I think would wake up the most sound sleep individual. Man, that's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping and praying. Here's here's what we need to do. We're not going to get it publicized except on blogs because the media is in bed with them. The media wants the the socialist turnover. They want the they want the same agenda that the left wants. They want the open borders. They want the socialism. They just the whole mess of it. They want it. So we are the media. We have to do it ourselves. Right. Now, here's, here's what could happen. If Obama has drug America down far enough that enough people are hurting and enough people are ticked off at what's going on, if we can get a veto-proof Senate, then we can start passing some laws. Obama can't stop them. We can. What we need to do is wipe out every one of these voter rolls in the entire country. Every state starts at zero. If you want to vote, you present a state-issued ID card. Boom, here it is. Shorten up the voter process. It's a three-week process. No, it's election day. Stretch it out to maybe three days because of work schedules. But this whole three weeks to get on a bus and drive from precinct to precinct to precinct to vote is stupid. No other country does this. In Afghanistan and Iraq, they never had a chance to vote. Now they do. So they come out of the caves on election day. They come down. They present a photo ID. They stick their finger in purple ink. It's that simple. This isn't rocket science. We can stop this voter fraud if we make them stop it. Right. Um, that ink will come it. off in two days. Yeah. Where are you listening from, brother? Banning, Banning, California. All right. God bless you. Um, you. We we are the media. Call some friends. Take. I've been asking for for weeks. Find, pick ten friends. Write their names down now. Call them and make sure they get out and vote, and have them do the same thing. If we're going to change it, we have to do it. We can't wait for somebody else to do it. Have you seen any voter fraud yourself? Brother, are you there? Okay, we lost the caller. Uh, We're right on. In fact, we're a little bit overdue for a break. Folks, stick with us. We're going to finish up when we get back from this break. Tom O'Halloran, holding the line against tyranny from Washington, D.C.
Welcome back. This is the Wednesday night edition of Patriot Radio Show, and I am your host, Tom O'Halloran. Tonight we're doing a special show. We're doing a, a, a real focus on voter fraud. And up next we've got, oh, uh, let's see, Ohio was good to Obama. Wow, 108% of registered voters in Ohio voted for Obama. That's phenomenal. First received over 99% of the vote in districts were the... Oh, this is the same state where the um, GOP inspectors were illegally removed. Then in 2012, 106,000 people in Wood County are registered to vote out of an eligible 98,000. Nice how you can do that. Oh, let's see. Massive voter turnout in St. Lucie County, Florida. St. Lucie County. 2012 election results. Only one precinct had less than 113% turnout. The official vote count is 175,554 registered voters. And yet there are 247,700 votes cast. 141% turnout. When asked about the 141% turnout, Supervisor of Elections Gertrude Walker stated there may have had something like that in Palm Beach County, but we've never seen it here. This is the election in which Colonel Allen West was outed. He was ousted. He lost his election. He lost his seat in Congress because the pathetic criminals on the left rallied the massive voter fraud to get him thrown out of office. 141%. What they should do is take the average voter turnout, which is probably 60% at best. Anything over that should be deducted from the liberals' vote tally. Because you know that that voter fraud was all Democratic. It almost always is. Now, the biggest voter fraud of all, and I promise you I was here to really, really, really tick you off. That's not what I said earlier, and I'm really hoping that went over the airwaves. This is the one. This is the ticket right here. If this doesn't get blood squirting out of your eyes, then nothing will. Barack Obama is the president and commander-in-chief of the U.S. military. But after his attorneys argued in court that service members defending the nation deserve no special accommodation to vote, a number of elected officials are raising questions about the White House's commitment to their rights. Tens of thousands of ballots from American military men and women serving overseas, tens of thousands of ballots did not get to them in time for them to vote and to return them. Now, this is not an accident. The military knows where these people are. They get their mail on a regular basis. You get transferred tomorrow, your mail may be two or three days behind, but it will get there. The military has been doing this for ages. Obama knows that the military is not going to vote for him. So he made sure, he made sure that the votes from the military didn't make it back in time for the election. Tens of thousands of votes, possibly more. I tried finding a story tonight. I was unable to. But there was a story about a plane going down with hundreds of thousands of military ballots on it. That was in 2012. I remember the story, but I don't remember whether it was validated and uh, verified or not. But the, the military has an office whose sole purpose for the DOD office is to get the ballots 
to the military and to get them returned and to get them turned in in time for the elections. The military's military...